your energy forecast for Saturday, September 7th. So we have the moon in Libra energy going void, of course, at 1.09 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. We're locking into Scorpio energy at 1.20 a.m. So a very short window, thank goodness, that things are going to be shaky, things are going to be unstable, things are going to be uncertain. But the transition from Libra energy to Scorpio energy is always very intense. We're moving out of the light, fluffy vibes of the mental plane where we want everybody to be happy and to get along and for peace and harmony and balance to reign supreme in that Libra energy. And now we have to do a deep dive in our shadow work in the Scorpio energy. It's a fixed water sign, which means that it's time to stabilize. We, again, we're in Virgo season. This is about focusing in on the issues, on the problems, especially where our mental plane is concerned in order for us to fix them, heal them, repair them, resolve them. The moon in Libra, again, took us on a little bit of a journey of extremes in order for us to find a sweet spot, for us to find a new common ground for our emotions and our headspace to be operating from. That means that we have some adjustments to make. We have some improvements to make. We have some transformations to make. And whatever it is that we've decided over the last little bit that needs to stay and needs to go, we're going to remove those particular aspects from our emotions, from our mental plane by bringing them to a completion point, bringing them to a form of acceptance, whatever is left over. We are going to merge back together in order for us to operate from a sense of wholeness and that fixed water energy of Scorpio is the way that we do it. How do we do it, you may ask? Well, we face our fears. We face our darkness. We face our insecurities. We recognize that whatever is left over from this adjustment period, from this improvement period, we can't operate from a fragmented state. We have to operate from a sense of wholeness and that merging energy that takes place in our emotional realm, in our soul, in our spiritual realm under the Scorpio influence is how we become whole again. But of course, we have to be bold, brave, and courageous in order to unearth the darker parts of our thoughts, of our emotions, of our memories, of our experiences, in order for us to turn them into power. Again, this is a very intense time for us to put the detective hats on to get real and raw and vulnerable with ourselves. Where it is that we're blocking our own progress, where it is that we're beating a dead horse, where it is that we've been praying for change, but we refuse to actually let go of the old aspect in order to make that change. It is time to boss up. The moon in Scorpio is never a fun time, but we come out on the end, the other end better for it. We move right in that Sag energy. Of course, that illuminates a new truth, a new mission, new purpose, new vision, new goal, new dream. But we got to go through the darker parts in order to actually appreciate the light at the end of the tunnel. That's currently where we're at. Now, let me also just say, we're in Virgo season, Virgo season, the Virgo energy, Scorpio energy. You cannot get any more matter of fact. You cannot get any more, let's call it detective ish than these two energies working together. So we are about to really reveal some honest truths, some sobering truths to ourselves on where it is that we may be using our own power to create some conflict, to create some tension, to create some fear in our physical realms that of course do not have to be there. We're in the year of eight. This is a boss up time. We're an examination period in order for us to test the parameters of our creator abilities, which means that we're going to be tested in our emotions. We're going to be tested in our headspace to see how strong we actually are. With all of that being said, there are nine different aspects taking place here today. Eight of them are going to involve the moon. While the moon is still in Libra and energy, still fighting for peace, for harmony, for balance, still kind of pushing us into, let's say, bringing those scales into balance, we have Mercury, the ruler of the mental plane, ruler of information, communication, how it is that we express ourselves, still in this Leo energy, the heart and soul of the zodiac, still in his post retrograde shadow period, although we're nearing the end of that come September 11th. 
We have Mercury getting into the boxing ring, fighting it out with Uranus. Uranus is the great awakener. He is retrograde, again, internalized reflection in Taurus energy. The whole point of Uranus's retrograde in Taurus energy is to illuminate where it is that we become too attached, too connected, too intertwined with the physical realm. We are essentially holding on to old people, places, and things, old memories, old chapters, old, let's call it mindsets, old belief systems that are preventing us from making this spontaneous shift, this pivot point in freeing ourselves from these particular restrictions. So we're being illuminated on where it is that we do have fears, doubts, and insecurities of letting go of the past because we're wishing that opportunity would knock on the door and give us a reason or validate, confirm to us that something better is just around the corner. That's how most humans really respond to making the changes is we need to see something better already arrive before we're willing to close the door on the old. That's not how the universe works. We have to have faith in ourselves, in the universe, in the greater grander plan. We have to identify what is old, what we've outgrown, what we no longer need to be attached to. We need to remove those aspects out of our physical realm, out of our mental plane, over our emotions. We have to remove that and trust that something better is around the corner. That is the only way that the new, the better is going to show up is if you release it on a whim, on the trust, on the faith that you have in the universe to provide something better. We have Mercury and Uranus. Uranus is the higher form of Mercury, meaning Uranus connects us to the highest realms of intelligence. Mercury rules over the lower level intellect that connects us to our ego. And so to have the highest form of our intelligence and the lowest form of our intelligence, get into the boxing ring, fight it out, square off, create tension and conflict in order to illuminate where we're having growing pains, which essentially is because Mercury being in Leo energy, the heart and soul of the Zodiac, we know that we need to make a change. We know what we're inspired and excited to pursue. We know what we have to do to make some improvements. The problem is, is that the Taurus energy that Uranus is currently retrograde in, holding on to the old for dear life, blocking the progress, blocking the magic, blocking the universe's opportunity to show us that we are growing through what it is that we're currently going through and that we have to close the door on certain aspects of the old world that the old version of self had created. So this is going to be a lot of head pressure. It's going to highlight for us where it is that we're confused as F because, you know, Mercury knows that we're heart and head aligned. We're getting in this very strong alignment. We know what we need to do. We know where we have to change. We know what we have to do and pursue in order to make our own selves happy. Uranus, on the other hand, creating confusion. We have no clue how it is that we're supposed to let go of this physical realm, of these physical aspects, of the old, the old chapters, the old people, the old places, the old things. We have no clue how we're going to let go. Again, highlighting the tension, the conflict, the growing pains of us realizing that we are currently in certain situations and circumstances that can no longer support us, can no longer encourage our growth, our evolvement, our healing. So something has to change. We just don't know how we're supposed to do those changes at this particular juncture, thus the confusion. Now, the moon in Libra energy is going to get into the boxing ring, square off, fight it out with Pluto. Pluto is the great transformer who is retrograde in Capricorn energy at the critical crisis karmic degree, 29 degrees, no joke. OK, so the moon is at the final degrees as well. Of course, emotionally speaking, things are going to get intense. That's what Pluto does. He intensifies everything. But Pluto right now, retrograde and Capricorn energy, we're taking a good look at what is still in existence that we know is preventing us from moving on and moving forward. We're taking a good look at the power that external forces still continue to have over us. A lot of that is because we're giving it that kind of power from our mental plane. And Pluto, who is about death and destruction in order for an empowerment to actually take place, that's how we transform. Pluto is showing us where it is right now that we're so fixated on trying to keep a level head, a level heart, so fixated on trying to keep everyone happy, everything as it was, that how could change happen under those particular energetic efforts? When you go to great lengths to stay in the shallow end of your thoughts, of your emotions, trying to make everything look like it's okay, peachy keen, 
then technically speaking, you are dismissing your power to be a creator, to make the transformations that need to take place in order to detach you, disconnect you from a lot of the situations, circumstances, aspects of the old world that the old version had created. You're avoiding that particular process. So again, the square highlighting tension and conflict because we're going through a growing pain here. The growing pain is, is that we know that there is an intensity in our lives. We know that emotionally speaking mentally speaking we have to boss up we have to be in our power we cannot continue to give our power away to people places and things outside of us we know that a major change has to take place we cannot continue to do the same old same old and expect a different result but emotionally speaking in the libra energy we just want everything to be rainbows and butterflies so we are essentially diluting ourselves at this particular point avoiding the deep end of the pool now here's where things get interesting we are coming out of the shallow end of the pool in this Libran energy. We are going right into the deep end in Scorpio energy. This is the last aspect that the moon makes before going void, of course. This is 1.09 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. We lock into Scorpio energy 1.20 a.m. So again, intensity in again, deep end of the pool, lots of heavy emotions, lots of heavy thoughts. We know where certain things need to come to an end. We know where we have to wrap things up and we're not trying to avoid it the way that we've been trying to avoid it the last couple of days. So, to, well, we lock in at the Scorpio energy, 1.20 a.m., 1.31 a.m. So what's that? 11 minutes later. The moon now in Scorpio energy going to semi square, create a little bit of tension and conflict with the sun in Virgo energy. So I've already mentioned Scorpio, Virgo energy, when they work together, whether they're getting along or not, we're about to flip tables and really reveal the issues at hand, especially emotionally and mentally speaking. Okay. Anytime that the sun and the moon come together in any type of interaction, we're going to have a new level of awareness of what needs to be done, what we want, what we need, what we desire, and what's blocking us from actually doing those things and getting the kind of results in which we want. The moon and Scorpio ready to do a deep dive. We're ready to put those diver gears on and start kind of moving into the shadow realm. The sun shining a bright light in this Virgo energy is kind of holding the flashlight as we prepare to do this deep dive in the dark end of the pool in order for us to see the depths that we need to go within ourselves to figure out what is actually blocking us from making this major change, this major transformation. Again, we have to essentially start swimming into the darkness, if you will, not knowing what we're going to bump into, what we're going to run into, but we understand that we have the power to fix it, to heal it, to repair it. We just have to identify the issue first. So we are essentially going to bring to the forefront where some deep seated issues are, where the programming's at, where the conditioning is at, where we are not trusting ourselves, where we are not feeling comfortable to take the accountability, the responsibility needed in order to understand what it is that we've created, what it is that we've allowed that we are no longer attached to, but yet we're avoiding letting go of to actually move on to move forward. This is definitely going to be intense. 333, that's a magical number, AM Eastern Standard Time. We have the moon in Scorpio energy, making a very awkward interaction with Saturn. Saturn is the Lord of Karma. He rules over roles, responsibility, system structures, foundations, willpower, and discipline. He is retrograde in Pisces energy. This is water on water action. Reminder, water on water action, first of all, cleanses us. Secondly, purifies us, kind of gets all of that debris, that good gunkiness off, if you will. It throws a bucket of cold water in our faces to sober us up, to give us a little bit of a reality check. Then it works on healing the emotional, the spiritual realm. Then it leads us into the changes, the transformations needed in order for us to find ourselves in a good emotional and spiritual position once again. And because water is the only element that can take on all three states, gas, liquid, solid, we are going to go through the ringer, so to speak, really address all different parts of self. Now, Saturn, he doesn't joke around. It's a little bit serious. It's a little bit somber. We need to get down to the nitty gritty of where it is that the old belief system 
fears, doubts, insecurities, the old belief system still alive and well within us, not really allowing us to move on, to move forward, to build towards a new goal, new vision, new dream, because we don't trust ourselves. We don't trust the universe. We are just exhausted at this point. We're kind of, I'm going to say depleted on our spiritual life force energy. We really need a little bit of a renewal where our faith is concerned. And this particular energy is going to illuminate where it is that we're actually comfortable in the discomfort, where it is that we've actually grown pretty good friends, pretty good relationship with our fears, with our insecurities. And at this particular juncture, because it is tried, tested and true, because it is familiar, because it is predictable, we're actually choosing to stay here because it seems to be the safer bet, if you believe it or not, than to actually move into foreign territory. So again, we're going to be kind of highlighting where it is that the part of self, we are creating the situation, this drama, this fear, this doubt, this insecurity, because it's easier for us to sit in that, complain about it, use that as a justification of why it is that we're continuing the same old patterns and behaviors. So we're definitely going to get a little bit of a reality check from Mr. Saturn. The moon in Scorpio energy, then going to trine beautiful interaction with Mars, the god of war, ruling over our physical energy, our drive, our passion, even our anger. Mars is fresh in this cancer energy. Mars, of course, is the co-ruler of Scorpio energy. So there's definitely intensity going on here. And you best believe that this is also a water on water interaction. A trine is a gentle nudge in the right direction where we're growing, where we're evolving, where we're healing. And so this particular interaction is going to illuminate to us where it is that A, we're still kind of adjusting to this particular energy. Uh, B, where it is that we have to kind of, again, connect to our higher self, to our intuition, to our instincts, and actually trust that the gut reaction that we're receiving is valid without us talking smack, talking fears, doubts, and insecurities into it. This is a good time for us to get real and raw and vulnerable with ourselves, what it is that we actually want to do, okay? We have to kind of perk up a little bit when it comes to realizing what we're inspired to do, what we're passionate to do, or what we're aggressively doing in order to fight, defend, protect what it is that we've already built. This is definitely going to trigger and activate a little bit of, we'll call it a little bit of fire. I mean, with all this water energy, fire really can't exist. But at the same time, there's a pep in our step. We are using our frustration, our agitation as a fuel as well. So if you don't find yourself inspired and excited, you might just want to lean into where it is that you're frustrated, agitated with certain circumstances. And that in itself is going to motivate you to make some changes to, of course, really bring peace, harmony, balance balance, safety, security, and stability back into your physical realm. The moon in Scorpio then going to make an awkward interaction with Jupiter, the planet of growth, expansion, beliefs, blessings. Jupiter, of course, in this Gemini energy still has us very divided on the options, the opportunities, the path, the direction that we want to take from here. Jupiter, of course, magnifying whatever it is that we're thinking, whatever it is that we're feeling, and we're feeling a lot in the Scorpio energy. Jupiter is trying to show us where it is that we have the opportunity to expand on our current situations and circumstances and where it is that we have an opportunity for growth. Okay, so how do we grow? We realize where it is that we've become comfortable, where it is that we've become a little bit stagnant, if you will. We understand that we are growing bored, discontent of our current circumstances, and we realize our options, our opportunities to spice things up. Now, indecision, yep, definitely a thing in this Gemini energy, again, back and forth, back and forth in order for us to find that sweet spot. But essentially, we're being illuminated to where it is that the major change, the major transformation in our emotional realm, in our soul, and our spirit, Scorpio energy, where that needs to take place first and foremost in order for us to find ourselves at a place of wholeness because we can't make any decisions from a fragmented version of self. We have to be standing in our power. We have to be in alignment, mind, body, and soul before we're going to make well-informed decisions. 
The moon then goes ahead, makes a positive interaction with Neptune. Neptune, of course, retrograde in his place of power in this Pisces energy. Again, some water on water action. And I love this particular interaction because it's kind of restoring our faith a little bit. It's reminding us that our intuition, our dreams, our creativity, definitely stronger now than it's been in a very long time. We kind of understand again what it is that we're fighting for or pushing towards. We're realizing what is blocking us from actually doing it. Again, the Scorpio energy is going to un earth the shadow parts of self and you best believe that us being a little bit too comfortable a little bit too familiar with this current struggle with this current circumstance is trumping our ability to put ourselves out there in a brand new way and explore a brand new path a brand new opportunity brand new foreign territory so this is kind of like a renewal a cleansing if you will to our soul and our spirit a reminder from our higher self what it is that we need to be aiming for and essentially what it is that we need to wrap up tie up the loose ends of close the door upon before we can actually pursue this brand new project goal dream vision path the moon is then going to make a very harsh interaction with the north node in aries energy so that north node trying to get us on the right path trying to get us more independent trying to get us to know thyself trying to get us on the mission that we need to be in order to fulfill the purpose if you will that our soul is here to fulfill this is a harsh interaction because right now we can't think about moving on and moving forward there are issues there are dark shadow parts there are topics and themes that we need to wrap up that we need to fully immerse ourselves in to bring it to a completion point a point of acceptance a point of finality before we can even begin thinking about how we're going to move on okay so the moon in scorpio very very in touch with our emotions good bad and otherwise very very in touch with our intuition and right now we cannot be thinking about the steps moving forward until we address the reasons of why it is that we are choosing to stay in this present moment choosing to continue to pour into chaotic situations that we've outgrown that are not supporting us that are not encouraging us what is the point of thinking about moving on when you don't even have a good grip on reality here in this present moment we have some work to do this is the shadow work that everybody wants to avoid that is absolutely essential for our changes for the transformations to actually take hold the last thing that we got going on here today is the moon in Scorpio making a positive interaction with Mercury ruler of the mental plane in Leo energy. So Scorpio is the fixed water sign. Leo energy is the fixed fire sign. The moon is our emotions. Mercury is our headspace. So our headspace is rearing to go. We're thinking about busting out. We're thinking about making a major change. We're thinking about all the changes that we want to make. We're thinking about how different we actually are in comparison to who it is that we've been, had to be, and the world around the reality that that old version of self has created. Emotionally speaking, the Scorpio energy looking to clear away the debris of the old version of self and whatever that old version of self has created in order for us to feel empowered enough to do what our headspace wants us to do, which is to be bold and brave and courageous and bust out of this particular circumstance of this particular situation. So our heart and our head are working on the same page. They are working together in a fixed energy to stabilize, again, heart and head, get them in alignment, because those two need to be in alignment before we can engage the physical body to take action and make moves to actually pursue a brand new path, new goal, new vision, new dream. So this is going to be an awareness on where it is that we're actively examining the parts of self that are preventing us from feeling safe and secure and stable really preventing us from feeling let's call it empowered enough to make the change the transformations needed we're examining those parts of self we're transmuting them into a higher frequency into a better perspective better emotion better understanding so that again we have the ability to stand in our power to activate those creator abilities and start making the changes that we know that we need to make